Hi, I'm Faith Buffarelli from Pete's Lunch and Learn, and I'm here with... My name is Maureen Barahona, and I'm from Guatemala. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your career? Uh, sure. Let's see. Uh, academically, you want to know it? Sure, like, yeah. Okay, well, first, let's see what... Here in Guatemala, it's a little bit different. Uh, we go straight into the careers uh, we want. Like in the US, you do first uh, four years of uh, basic science and that stuff. But here in our country, you go straight into the career you want. Like from the first month you start med school or engineering. So first I studied um, eight years of med school. And after that, I did a master's degree in hospital administration. And after that, I did a master's degree also in dermatology. And after that, I studied another master's degree, which are called subspecialties or high specialties in uh, dermatological surgery. And I have been training a little bit around the world in different techniques in cosmetics and dermatological surgery. Um, what services do you offer to your clients? Uh, we have different, well, in my case, uh, let's see. Uh, I offer different services because uh, first dermatology allows you to see um, nails, skin, and hair, and also mucous membranes, which are uh, eyes, a little bit of eyes, uh, mouth, and genitals. So I see uh, basically clinic. And I also see the part of uh, surgery and surgery, what I do is uh, mostly most surgery, which means that you take skin cancers out, but you have to make sure of the uh, cancerous area. So you make sure that the tumors are out. So basically I see hair, skin, nails, mucous membranes, and um, anything related to dermatological surgery. And the last one, uh, ha well, it gives you the skills to uh, do cosmetic surgery, which means uh, Botox, fillers, um, lasers, and that kind of thing. So we see clinic surgery and cosmetics. Um, why did you choose to become a dermatologist? Uh, why did I choose to be a dermatologist? Um, let's see. Uh, when I was, uh, we are six brothers. One of my brothers is married with another uh, doctor who is a dermatologist. And when I was on my fourth year of med school, I had the chance to travel to Mexico and have a rota an elective rotation and whatever I wanted. And uh, I decided for it to be dermatology. I realized that dermatology has a lot to do with everything on the body. So somebody can has, have a disease, uh, I don't know, a heart disease or, um, or even a metabolic disease and they can show uh, uh, these diseases in the skin. But also, I like the fact that, well, I'm very active and I don't like just to be sitting doing prescriptions and I like to do things with my hands. So dermatology is an area of medicine where you can practice a lot of clinics, but you can do things with your hands like surgery and you can do uh, beauty too. So it's a very flexible uh, area of medicine. That's what I like about it. And that's why basically I decided on a rotation uh, when I was... I wasn't that time, I think I was uh, like, mm, like 22 years old on that time. What is person, a oh, sorry. <laughs> um, what is a normal, what does a normal day look like for you as a dermatologist? Oh, a normal day. Uh, I think actually the normal, uh, to say normal wouldn't be <laughs> like the word they use because it can vary a lot. The main disease that I see would probably be acne and I'll be treating acne in the morning, but later I could have a mass surgery and that could take between four to six hours, depends on the patient. And in the afternoon I could do fillers. So th that's the way I could describe my day. It has like different activities. I do mostly clinic. I don't do hospital, I do private practice. I decided to start my pr private practice right away. So um, it has a lot in it. Uh, it's not just a full day of acne or a full day of weird diseases. I have, uh, social media had led me to see patients from around my country. So I get a lot of referrals from people who don't do surgeries and also who uh, have no idea of what the skin they have on the skin. <laughs> so I get weird cases. 
Um, what would you say to someone who wants to go down the same career as you? Ah, uh, let's see. Well, what would I say? First, that you have to like medicine. Going through med school, it's pretty hard. Um, it's also tough in your country. I think medicine is tough everywhere. Uh, when you study medicine, we were doing night shifts every three days and you have to stay awake for 72 hours and then get back to the hospital. So the glamorous part of dermatology is just one thing, but you have to be willing to sacrifice a lot of your years um, for studying general medicine. But what would I say? You have to be sure that you love um, to be in touch with people that you have to be sure that you will be well, willing to sacrifice your time, sometimes friends and sometimes family. But if you love uh, to treat people and to take care of people basically, uh, then you'll do fine. It's just a wonderful career. It takes a lot of time and effort, <laughs> but I would never change the career I have. I love it and I'm just very grateful and now I, with dermatology, at least when you are a general physician, um, even economically, um, you don't get that much reward. But once you are a doctor with a specialty or subspecialty, you have you own more your time, so you can decide your vacation, your time, your salary, your income also. So it gets better with the time, but it needs a lot of effort. Um, how has COVID nineteen affected your business? Ooh, <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> That was very, I don't know how was it in your country, but here in Guatemala, let's see, our president announced, I think it was in the beginning of March, uh, everything is closed. He just said that everything was closed. So I had, well, thankfully, uh, my practice got good. So if you book for an appointment, you will have an appointment in two months. But the thing was that I have my agenda already booked and the president announced Guatemala is just closed. Nobody can open. And we're like, what? Even the doctors? Yes, nobody can open. So uh, we just have to call everybody. Uh, sorry, but we have to reschedule your, your appointment. And we, uh, we don't know when we're going to open back. And after that, after one week, the president said, doctors uh, can't see consultation. So we start calling back the patients. But the thing is, was that there were curfews. So we had to be by 4 p.m. at our houses, then a coffee filter at 6 p.m., then at 9 p.m. So every single day, uh, my secretary and I were calling our patients up the next day so they could send us um, their ID, their, um, uh, the number of their cars, the, the plate on the car, and also their driver's license because there were days when one uh, car's ID could go uh, on a day and another where uh, another play could go. So you have one day for pairs, one day for unpairs. And we were calling every single patient. And on the beginning, I was really, really stressed. And I just say, I have to pay so many salaries. And I there's people depending on me because I have people who are involved in marketing, people who are involved in answering, people who are involved in design, uh, my secretary and people that depend on the clinic. And I was really, really stressed. And after one week, I cried a little bit. And after crying and suffering with that, then I say, no, I just have to make this work. So we were just making letters for all the patients to get to come. And most of my patients come from, uh, I have patients that, come, that get to the clinic from five hours or eight hours away from the clinic. So we are a center of referral. So it was, pretty hard to do. And um, then after a while, I decided that I was gonna change the things that I did. There were not people, uh, there were not a lot of people coming. So I say, well, if people are not gonna come, they are gonna remember. So I took more time and I started, well, I was before on social media. I don't do funny stuff. I do a lot of education on social media. So I decided, well, people are gonna remember. If people are gonna be home office, I'm the one that they're gonna see. So that's what I decided. And I was doing a lot of inform uh, information videos and uh, lots of things during this time, but it totally changed my practice. But you can decide if you are just gonna stay there crying and suffering with no patience and, and staying at home or deciding that you don't care very much about the disease. I do care, but I say, well, I prefer to get the disease rather than not to 
see my patients and having the families of the people that depend on me not have their food. So I just said, I'm just gonna grab it. And that's what I did. And thankfully uh, we had patients. <laughs> Um, how long have you been doing this after like school? Um, I, let's see. I graduated from med school on 2009. Uh, I graduated from dermatology in 2015. 2017, I got graduated from surgery. So I think pretty much three years. That's when I started life officially because I, well, I have been practicing, but like my own practice three years ago. Um, what makes your services different than other competitors in Guatemala? Oh, let's see. Um, I think one of the things is I, I do generally care about people and I'm the kind of person that doesn't get satisfied until I reach to an answer and a positive outcome for my patients. So I think that I generally care. That's one of the things. And that I know that uh, sometimes I charge a little bit more than other doctors, but I'm gonna give you enough of my time and you are gonna learn about your disease and you are gonna learn how to treat it. That's one of the things. And I think it pretty much, I, I think that that's one of the things. We offer pretty much the same services, but uh, one of my things that make me different from the rest is that around my country, uh, with this certificate of a uh, dermatological surgeon, we're basically 10 in the country, basically, with the degree. So that's one of the main things that made me different from the rest of the dermatologists in a country where around uh, probably 130 dermatologists and uh, very few have uh, the surgery degree. Sorry, I was on mute, so they're ready to be back on. Uh, my last question is, what is your company's goal? My company's goal? Well, I have a lot of goals. I have personal goals and company's goals, but both are related. Uh, currently, I have a clinic. I, I own it. I don't share it with anybody, but I'm trying to build a center. Uh, probably at the end of this year, we are going to try to move to a different place or buy the list. So I'm planning to have an area where I can have it. Well, I, I reached to the point where um, I reached to the point where I need more more help. I want to have more time for doing uh, social media marketing. Basically, I do a lot of teaching, and most of my patients come from social media. We do a lot, so I want to have help and have other doctors that could see consultation with me. So I could tell them basically what to do and uh, have enough space for lasers and surgery. But that way I would get more time for being in social media. Um, what we do mostly in social media, and which is very, very important for the branding and the marketing of the clinic, is that we, I, I think that there's a lot of, you were asking me before, what was one of the difference between my competitors? Yeah. And usually uh, doctors are very secretive of mm -hmm. what they learn because they think sometimes that if you teach people, then people are going to understand and they're not going to consultate. But the main thing with the clinic and on myself was that I decided that I was going to be the doctor to whom they would like to consultate. And that was because I was going to teach you. And if I got to teach you, then you'll learn about the disease. And even if you didn't have the disease, you would think about my name whenever uh, somebody was sick of their skin or have a skin disease. So that's what I decided. We made a lot of things around the marketing because we, we say, okay, which first, what is gonna be the brand? And I say, well, I want to be known by my name. So my, my clinic is my name, Maureen Barahona. And I have interesting in Guatemala, my name is kind of weird, it's different. Maybe in the US it's more common, it's more on the 70s. Uh, name is not that, that new. But here in the country, I have a weird name and a weird last name. My last name is Paraona, even for my country is weird. So we decided that we were gonna have something interesting and the interesting was even my name. 
Second, the fact of having something different to offer, which was the surgery and the ability for, for uh, cosmetics too. So I do cancer and cosmetics mostly. And also I would teach you about weird diseases. So usually every week I have, uh, I, I decided I was gonna have like an interesting case. Weird cases, very difficult to solve. I was gonna explain them to you why they were hard to solve why uh, we got to those conclusions on the results on the patients. Also, we decided that uh, we were gonna have fun stuff. So I do, uh, we do a lot of cartoons with the people who work uh, graphic design and tell them what to do and what to say in each cartoon so they can represent a disease. And I do a lot of videos, uh, uh, pretty much um, videos of information. I ask my patients if they would let me show their disease on, on, the, on the videos. I do a lot of Facebook and Instagram. I, I am not very into TikTok, but I'm not the dancing kind of doctor, but um, that's one of the things. And so we do a lot of education and I think that was it, uh, making people want what I love it. And that's dermatology. I love dermatology. And I think that if people find it interesting and they know that I can explain them very well, they are going to consultate. So that's one of the reasons why the clinic has worked because there are a lot of people that come to uh, Guatemala. There are a lot of poor people. Uh, we are a super nice country, but there's a lot of, of needed people. But they even take a bus and they even sometimes uh, start their journey at 12 p.m. or 3, 4 a.m. to be in the clinic by, I don't know, 10 a.m., uh, 2 p.m. So they make a long, long journey sometimes to come to the clinic. And in the beginning, people were like, Maureen, do you think actually people are going to come with you? You are getting into a field where there are like the big heads in dermatology. I don't know. There are Here, they're very well known, the Villanuevas or uh, Vilma Garcia or, I don't know, Pati Chang, like the famous dermatologists. And they were like, how are you going to be able to compete with those huge heads that have everything and you with no money are going to come and compete? I don't come from a wealthy family. I come from a very good educated family who put a lot of effort. And um, I said, I'm going to just start my practice. I got into huge steps uh, for uh, being able to uh, pay the bills, very severe. Extremely scared, I would say. Mm -hmm. I just say, I'm just going to move and start my private practice right away. And marketing was the, probably the main thing that made the success of the clinic. But it needs a lot of work every single day, almost. Now I don't do it every day, but on the beginning, I was every single day posting, doing videos. And most mostly during COVID time. And... Um, it's very interesting because now people come to the clinic and they say, oh, doctor, you don't know me, but I know you from your videos. Mm -hmm. And so marketing has been just a huge thing in the clinic. It has been uh, a great thing for making difference with my competitors because mostly uh, they were a little bit older than me or there were people who wouldn't um, like to be on cameras. And the beginning they say, oh, I don't want to be in social media. I, want, I don't want my face. Uh, and with the COVID, most more people started, but they started very late. And I say, okay, I'm just going to be first on the rest. And if I hit first, then it's going to be harder. So I wanted to be the doctor that they would remember during COVID time. After that, even they can consultate during COVID time. After COVID goes away, I'm going to be the one that you go. So that's what marketing and social media came to be for the clinic. Perfect. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye.